Hello again. Uh, my name is Mark Greenberg. I'm Product Marketing Group Director at Cadence, and I'm responsible for DDR, Storage, Memory, and uh, MIPI. And today we'll talk a little bit about reducing power in your DDR5. And in one of my previous Whiteboard Wednesdays, you will have heard me talking about how to reduce power in the DRAM by either reducing the frequency or by using a run and stop method where you uh, run the memory for a little while and then go into a low power mode. So today I'm going to talk about reducing power in the PHY, and there may be instances where you want to reduce your DRAM operating frequency, and when doing so, then you also want to reduce the DDR5 power, and I'll show you a couple of ways that we have of, of doing that in the DDR5. So if we come back to a similar curve to what we looked at before, where we represent, uh, uh, represent power on one axis and uh, frequency on another, we already established what the, uh, what the DRAM power looks like, what the DDR power looks like, and there's some uh, minimum power that the DRAM device uses, and then there is a, um, uh, you know, a, a, a relatively flattish curve that uh, represents the amount of power used at a given frequency inside the DRAM device. Uh, now, what I also want to look at, because this is really only half of the picture, and if we want to look at the total system power, we have to consider the power of the, uh, the power of the memory, which is going to be something like this, and we have to look at the power of the physical interface, which is, uh, which I'll represent in red. So on the SO, the power of the phi, the phi being located in the SOC side of the, uh, of the system. And if we look at the phi power, uh, it's going to be nonlinear for frequency because we have different features within the phi that we can turn on and off at different frequencies. So what you might find in the, um, uh, in, in the DDR5 is that, um, again, you, you may have some function that is linear with frequency up to a point, and then you're going to have a step function upwards. And again, there may be another linear section and then a step function up and a linear section and a step function and a linear and a step function like this. And so we may arrive at the phi power uh, in a different way from how we arrive at the memory power. And so the, the immediate question is going to be, well, what are these things uh, doing? Well, what, what you'll find when implementing or using a DDR5 is that at different frequencies of operation, you may choose to have different features of the phi turned on. So at, at some maximum frequency of the phi, I may need to turn on, for example, or turn on or off uh, some, some transmit equalization. Right? And at a lower frequency, I may need to turn on or be able to turn off my uh, receiver equalization. And at an even lower frequency, I may be able to turn off my on-die termination. And then, you know, in this section all the way between here and here, I may be able to actually even have some, some, some further steps as I may introduce um, different settings of on-die termination and also different settings of drive strength, both in the phi and, the, and, and in the DRAM. So I may, I may choose different points through this frequency range um, to, to optimize both the on-die termination setting and the drive strength of the phi. And then at very low frequency, I may, within my phi, I may also turn off the uh, PLL and go into a PLL bypass mode at, at very low frequency and bring the power down here. So the, um, the phi power is, uh, if, if you use the power features within the phi, the phi power is kind of a nonlinear thing. And so when selecting an intermediate frequency to, to work at, if you choose to, to select an intermediate frequency, uh, you're probably going to want to try and find one of these points where you're just able to turn off uh, whatever, whatever feature it was and try to run up to that point uh, and no higher. And that's probably one of the points where you'll find the least total system power for the workload that you have. So in a nutshell, uh, you can use your phi low power features to be able to reduce the uh, power capability of the phi at uh, different frequencies, and you should choose your frequency operating points according to um, the frequencies at which it's necessary to, to, to turn on or off those different features. 
So with that, that's another Whiteboard Wednesday, and we hope you'll join us for another one soon. 